Good morning. I'm in the back, so uh, I'm just letting you know that uh, welcome to worship here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Today is a special day on this Reformation Sunday. We will have six young people of this congregation who will be affirming their faith in Christ Jesus, and we are here to celebrate and encourage them in their continued walk with faith as we bless and celebrate God's love for them. I would invite you to please stand as you are able as we begin with the confession and forgiveness that is in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us hear the good news. Almighty God in Jesus Christ, he gave his son to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, number 504, in your red hymnal, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
This morning's greeting can be found on page one of your worship bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. The prayer of the day can also be found on page one of your morning's worship bulletin, and let us pray together. Merciful God, gracious and benevolent, through your Son you invite all the world to a meal of mercy. Grant that we may eagerly follow his call and bring us with all your saints into your life of justice and joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. This morning's reading is from the New Testament book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 and 11 through 12. This also can be found on pages 1 and 2 in your worship bulletin if you'd like to follow along as I read. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as it is right because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. I would like to invite any kids that would like to come on up to come forward. You can stay standing up with me here because we're going to be moving around a little bit. Good morning. How's it going? Good. So uh, we have, I want you to turn and look at these six right over here. I know, stare at them, make them really embarrassed. I'm, I'm just kidding. So this, what's going on right here with, with these six people is in your future. Now, um, today is a special day for them because uh, several years ago, uh, let's see, I was looking at the day that each of them was baptized, and they were baptized when they were a lot younger. And so when they were baptized at a place over there called a font, there was water in there, and we blessed that child. And not only was there a blessing, but there were promises that were made. Now, there are lots of times that we make promises. Uh, sometimes when when people get married they make promises when they actually any time that somebody buys something with a credit card or a check they sign their name and that's a promise that say I'll pay for this so there's all kinds of promises that are made but the, the, the promise that we are celebrating today is that when they were baptized these six people were baptized uh, God promised that they would love them always Okay, but not only that, the congregation that was gathered on that day and the parents and the godparents made promises that they would help them teach them about God and about God's love. Now, these six, these six people that you see today are not going to stop learning about God just because we're having a ceremony. Today is a big deal because... We are remembering and giving thanks for all of the people that helped them learn about God along the way. Parents and godparents and sponsors and Sunday school teachers and confirmation teachers. 
All kinds of people have helped them learn about God. And we talk, we talk about this whenever we get together, but sometimes it's just good to say thank you and to say we encourage you that God still loves you. We need reminders. You don't just say, your parents just didn't say when you were really little, I love you, and then they're good for the rest of your life. They tell you all the time, don't they? Yeah, they kind of they remind you. And you know, this is kind of embarrassing, but you know, we need reminders. We need reminders that we are loved. And so what we're going to do today is I want you, we're going to go over there and we're going to pray for them. And when we pray for them, I want you to think about that someday this is going to be you. And uh, we do it not because um, we want to scare them or something like that, because they're a little worried. They're a little, they're a little worried they're, they're going to do everything right. But you know what? No matter what happens today, God always loves them. And that's a good reminder for us that no matter what happens in your life, God always loves you. So, all right. So, come on over here. Okay, so pretty soon, in a little bit, they're going to be standing up there and their families are going to join them and their godparents are going to join them and their mentors are going to join them uh, and they're going to pray and bless them, but we're going, to, we're going to get them started, okay? So we got Chloe and we got Brennan and we got Samantha and we got Jalen and we got Noah and we got Brody and we're going to pray for them, okay? So here... When you're praying with me up here, we do something. I say, let us pray, and we clap, and we do that three times, and then you'll repeat after me. So you ready? Let us pray, clap, let us pray, let us pray, and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for always loving us. Today we pray for our friends in Christ. And the promises that you have made will go with them always. We pray for Chloe. We pray for Brennan. We pray for Samantha. We pray for Jalen. We pray for Noah. We pray for Brody. And for all that are gathered with them here today, May we all remember that you love us always. And all of God's children said, Amen. Thanks for coming up. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up at him and said, Zacchaeus, hurry up and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this is a pretty big weekend. We have six young people here at Good Shepherd who are being confirmed today. It's kind of a, a strange word. Uh, confirmed is, is not necessarily the best word. One of the words that shows up in the hymnal is that it's an affirmation of baptism. A baptism doesn't mean need to be confirmed. You guys, when you were baptized, when any of us were baptized, that is God's final word that God will always love you. There's nothing anyone can do to take it back. Confirmation is not your ticket to heaven. It's a milestone. A milestone is a mark in life to let us know where we are. It's like when you're driving along a highway and you see a green sign that points to a, a, a junction in the road where you go one way and you go to one town or you go another way and go to another town or that you see a sign on the road that says this may be a good stop to stay for the night or this is where you go to fill up your tank in your car full of gas or maybe this is where you need to go if you need to go to the hospital. Confirmation is that day where we stop and we think about where we've been and where we are going. <clears throat> For the congregation, it's really important because if you look around, and I want you to at some point take a look out into the congregation, there are a lot of people here who have invested a lot of time, a lot of energy because they love you and they care about you. They care about this church and they care about the promises that have been made to you that they would raise you in the faith because that's what happens in baptism. We make promises that we will do our very best. And parents don't do it alone. They have godparents. They have pastors. They have teachers. They have people in the church and friends that help so you can come to this day and know that God loves you, that there is nothing that will happen that will stop God from loving you. We need these reminders. As I, told the, as I told the kids, as we were getting ready to pray for you, we just don't say, I love you once to someone. We need reminders because if we don't, we, we kind of get unsure. And we need that encouragement. This is that day. This is a day for you to be encouraged that God goes with you because you are becoming adults. You're going to be going out into the world and you're going to be figuring out what you're going to be doing and my prayer and our prayer is that faith will be part of your consideration about how you live your life. The relationships that you have, the work that you do, the studies that you take on, the friends that you have, the people whom you help, all of these things, our prayer is that you remember that God is with you and that you are always loved as you make those decisions. Every confirmation ceremony is special because this is such a milestone. And it's a big deal in my house. After I uh, issue my congratulations to you, to this group of people, um, I am going to be heading back to Mankato because my daughter is being confirmed today at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Mankato at a one o'clock service. So. I get to do two confirmation services today. Any of you jealous? No? Okay. So, to get ready for this day, I know a lot of people have traveled. I know many people here are local, but I know people have traveled as well. And I was preparing in my house. We got 16 people coming over today. And my parents have come from Washington State, where I grew up. Now, I had a bit of a panic in preparing for this particular day. Uh, on Wednesday morning, I got a text from my dad, and he said, We will see you this afternoon, Joey. Our plane is pulling away from the gate. And I thought about it a second. I looked at my calendar, and it said that that day was Wednesday, but I had expected my parents to show up on Thursday. 
So I was having a relaxing morning. I was getting ready to prepare for confirmation and the worship service that was on Wednesday. And I kind of like to ease into Wednesday with a little workout, kind of have a clear mind. But knowing that my parents were going to be showing up more than 24 hours before I was anticipating, if cleaning was an athletic event, I would have won a medal. Now, this is cleaning a house and preparing for my mother to show up. Um, it's kind of a it's it's a big deal to me because my mother uh, cleaned houses for one of her jobs when I was a kid, and she would take me along with her, and she taught me how to clean houses, for which my wife is very grateful. Um, now, my mother wasn't going to show up to my house and do a white glove test over everything that I had cleaned, but um, I also know that she was, and I've seen her do it, uh, she's kind of checked around the house to see how things are because it was her first time in our new house in Minnesota. So I know she's checking things out, and I imagine she's even checking things more out as I am here and she is back in Mankato. No matter how good of a cleaning job I was able to do, I know that there are things I didn't quite get to. Things are not perfect when it comes to cleanliness at my house. Now, as I imagine those kinds of things, I wondered, hmm, maybe it might be a better idea to just put them up in a hotel room. Or I could just buy a new house. Um, but the thing is, no matter how hard I work, no matter how much I try to prepare for my parents to show up, no matter how much elbow grease or scrubbing I put into the areas of my house, my house will never be perfectly in order. And maybe some of you can resonate with that. Whether you are more of the fixer in the household or the cleaner in the household, there's always another project to do. So why do I tell you this story today? What if Jesus came up to you while you were at school, while you were at work, while you were doing business in town, and said, hey, Brennan, I'm coming to your house today. Or if, I, if Jesus just called out your name and said, hey, I'm coming to your house. What would you think about first? Do I have anything to serve Jesus? What does he drink? What does he eat? Or is my house clean? Or if, he, if Jesus comes up my steps, is he going to trip over that one place that's not quite repaired right? I hope he doesn't trip when he comes into the house. Will I be able to remember everything? I have always loved this story. This story of Jesus and a man named Zacchaeus. And Jesus invites himself to Zacchaeus' house. It kind of breaks the mold of what we think of when it comes to faith. We often think of faith as something that we do to prepare ourselves to approach God. Are we wearing the right clothes? Are we thinking about the right things? Have we done the right prayers? Are things as neat in our lives as we think they should be if we're going to be praying or being in the presence of God or going to church? But this passage, this story, shows us that Jesus comes to Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus isn't necessarily prepared for it. This, ha this story is also extraordinary because Jesus goes to the house of someone who would not normally be seen. First of all, Zacchaeus is short. Sometimes people who are not quite as tall, you'll see this with, with children. I mean, I, 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 uh, when we had this big group of kids up here, there were some of the littler ones, and I'm looking at the taller ones, and then I notice that there's some shorter ones that are standing right behind me. Zacchaeus was one of those kind of guys. He didn't necessarily stick out in a crowd. 
but the way that he did stick out in the crowd is no one liked him. And no one liked him because he was a tax collector. Now, tax collector, I don't think any society likes a tax collector, but tax collectors in Jesus' time were in tight with the empire, and so he had kind of a double whammy against him. He was collaborating with the enemy, and he was someone who collect taxes. He is someone who is despised. But Jesus goes to his house, and Jesus lets Zacchaeus know that salvation has come to his house today. So what can we learn from this passage? It doesn't matter to Jesus whether Zacchaeus' house is in order. Sometimes, no matter how much we prepare or how much we plan or how disarrayed we think our life is, God always wants to be involved in our lives. Sometimes it's tempting to think that God is distant, but this passage reminds us that God is near. Jesus sees Zacchaeus because others don't, or because they can't, or because they won't. And this is a good message for you, because one of the things about moving into adulthood when it is that you go out on your own or you have to make decisions that affect you, the hard thing about adulting is that it can feel very lonely. And that this passage and actually this ceremony is a reminder that God's just not with you when you're a kid. God goes with you when you feel the loneliest. And there will be some lonely days ahead. The other thing that I find interesting about this story is that faith is not so much about certainty, but curiosity. So if you're trying to think about what it means to be a person of faith as you become an adult, it's not about the things you are certain about. It's about curiosity. This is what Zacchaeus does. He knows how important Jesus is. He has seen Jesus heal and teach and confront authorities. And Zacchaeus wants to check him out. And so I would say that what it means to be a person of faith as you become an adult is that you are curious. What are you asking questions about? And I think it's a good reminder for all of us as we think about how Faith is incorporated into our life on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not about what you are certain about. Zacchaeus shows it is what you are curious about. And, Jesus, and Zacchaeus' curiosity gets Jesus to say, I'm with you. Salvation has come to your house today. So however it is that you celebrate today, Confirmation Class of 2022 at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, Salvation has already come to your house. But know that it is not only that God shows up at your house, but that Jesus goes with you. And so we celebrate with you and your families and your godparents and all those who are here to celebrate with you. And know and cherish all of these people who have kept their promises to raise you in the faith. And that even as you go into adulthood and may feel alone, know that God always goes with you. Amen. We sing uh, the hymn of the day, number 677, in your red hymnal, This Little Light of Mine. Please stand as you are able.
These people have been instructed in the Christian faith and now desire to make a public affirmation of their baptism. Chloe Cummings. Brennan Olson, Samantha Posein, Jalen Stangler, Noah Todd, Brody Winstead. Chloe? Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in these gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all of you have brought to new faith. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Chloe Cummings. Joshua 1 9. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be, do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Brennan Olson. Ephesians 4.32. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted. <clears throat> Forgiving one another, and as God in Christ has forgiven you. Samantha Posine. Psalms 23.4 Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Jalen Stangler. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Noah Todd. Matthew 21, 22. Whatever you ask for in prayer with faith, you will receive. Brody Winstead. Proverbs 4.23 Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Okay, confirmands, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I invite the congregation to please stand as you are able to please join me at the bottom of page 235 in your red hymnal. You'll be joining with the confirmands. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you at your holy baptism to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. So, your promises are not over, people of God. So, you have a promise to continue. People of God, do you promise to support these young people and pray for them in their life in Christ? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. So I'll ask two confirmands at a time to go to the bottom of the steps and their family and friends and baptismal mentors present who will participate in the laying on of hands to come forward with your confirmand. So we will have Chloe and Brennan come down first. And I'll invite their families and mentors and godparents to come forward. So you can put put your hands on their or on their shoulders if you'd like or if you can't get close enough you can put your hands on someone who's next to you we'll start with Chloe father in heaven for Jesus sake Stir up in Chloe the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Brennan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Samantha and Jayla. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Samantha the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. 
Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Jalen the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, guys. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Noah the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower his serving, give him pa patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Brody the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, confirmands, I'm going to have you stand up, face the congregation, turn around and face the congregation, and I invite the congregation to join me on the bottom of page 236 in the front of your hymnal. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Please join me in a round of applause for these compliments. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you.
as we now turn to the prayers of the church. At the conclusion, conclusion of each prayer of the church, I will say, Hear us, O God, and the congregation is asked to respond with, Your mercy is great. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Keep your church steadfast in your word, reforming God. Deepen our faith and increase our love in Jesus' name. Further ecumenical dialogue and partnerships and equip us for unified witness and service in this world. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Come to the aid of the poor, especially those suffering food and water shortages or loss of homes due to natural disasters. Halt the exploitation of the earth's resources and lead us to seek justice and rescue the oppressed. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Guide leaders of all nations, almighty God, Heal divisions, build trust, and remove barriers that prevent collaboration and cooperation. Bring neighborhoods, cities, and countries together to work for the common good of all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Save us from trouble and those who struggle with hunger, homelessness, or addiction. Strengthen the overworked and give hope to those who do not have enough work. Console those who are burdened by illness or grief, especially from our Good Shepherd family, Jerry Ewart, Cindy Schroeder, Jim Proust, Deb Larson, Roger Grosskreitz, Dennis Bruckhoff, Eldo Overbo, Artie Carlson, and Suzanne Martin. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Reveal yourself to all who seek you. Empower the hospitality ministries of this congregation to welcome others to your feast of love. Foster generosity in our stewardship ministries to both our congregation and our community. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will receive our morning offering.
our offering hymn this morning is Morning Cry, which is found in the back of the Red Book, hymn number 732. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after the supper had ended, Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all of them to drink, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So uh, the congregation may be seated. For uh, communion today, we will have uh, two stations uh, on each side. Please follow the direction of the ushers. The confirmands will be communing first uh, with their mentor and their immediate families. Uh, after that, uh, please follow the direction of the ushers. If, uh, when you come up, if you wish to receive communion, please extend your hands forward so that uh, we know that you would like to receive communion. If you come up and do not extend your hands, you'll receive a blessing. Come for now, all is ready. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
So what am I doing? Am I doing bread? Do bread? Okay. Okay.
Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Receive the blessing. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our sending song is number 547, sent forth by God's blessing. peace with Christ beside you. Thank you.